Blake Prize this year provides a wonderful introduction into the manner in which spirituality and religion and the human image occurs in contemporary art. And within that wide survey of 73 images, there's always inevitably a number of images that address issues of human justice quite confrontingly with anger and other ways sometimes more subtle and evocative. Uh, this year we have an award for human justice which is given by the Maritime Union of Australia and this year Franz Kempf has won with this very eloquent work. Uh, Franz Kempf is around the age of 86, he's an old elder statesman of Australian art and an artist of Jewish cultural background who's often been concerned with issues of justice and what I see in this work is is the words and images of an old, tired man who's somewhat irritably drawing our attention to the fact that, as we remember the Holocaust, uh, it's still an ongoing story and being repeated in our culture. Why do we grow so weary of uh, these things occurring over and over again in our culture? When you look at the work, you're drawn into the centre. There's no grand central focus. And off to the side, lower here, we have what as we look a little closer, appear to be a pile of bodies. They just sit there incidentally in an otherwise grey and confronting space. Our awareness of human justice occurs most profoundly when it comes in from the edge, gets under our skin and unsettles our way of viewing. And this work by Owen Leong, a young Sydney artist, draws attention to a struggle that is conveyed in these gestures of hands. On the right hand side you have his own hand which has been cut. It's a kind of mark that you would take if you were committing suicide or you'd undergone some injury. And then as the eye moves across here to the left, you have two sets of hands, arms, one old and one young. The artist tells us that he actually involved his own father in making this artwork and you can see that their arms are bound together and this, I think, reflects on the essential struggle between fathers and sons. The injury that occurs when fathers wound their sons and then reciprocally the capacity of fathers to sacrifice their sons. Uh, this work conveys in a very graphic image the struggle and also for the potential for healing. And you can see in their hands they're holding big chunks of honeycomb and honey is dripping uh, from this huge object. Honey is an ancient symbol of healing and so in this work is conveyed uh, this eternal ongoing story of Abraham and Isaac, the sacrifice of sons for the ambition of fathers, but also the potential there is in these relationships for, for healing and renewal. Within the wide number of works that are offered for the Blake each year, there is this focus on justice. And so it's inevitable that some works will actually take the church and religious institutions to task. Uh, this particular work presents us with a religious, a religious written letter and it actually calls into account uh, religious leaders for their, for their hypocrisy uh, as an act of injustice. It leads us to perhaps wonder that we live uh, in a time of more openness where the church is in fact enduring more public scrutiny for its actions in society. Perhaps that's an opportunity for the church to be seen as a place that actually creates justice. This is very eloquently conveyed in this work by Rodney Popel, which has a cardinal-like religious figure uh, screaming and uh, in some sort of ecstasy. And below him is this circle of small children. Uh, these are both references to a lot of images in Western art, here about power and church authority, and here about the innocence, the, the dance, the, the fundamental delight of being alive in a, in a company of others. So it's a, a very potent symbol, these two things put side by side. Maybe this work directly addresses clergy abuse, and perhaps we should be grateful that these issues are now being visualised, spoken about, narrated. We're beginning to hear the stories of human beings who've undergone these sorts of experiences. Again, they offer the church a challenge to be involved as a justice-making organisation. One of the temptations in regard to considering justice is to reduce it to polit political issues, you know, human justice issues. What justice requires a, is a, a compassion to get under somebody else's skin, to have the capacity as a human being to get into another person's experience and to understand in an empathetic way. 
This work by Danny Marty is an eloquent video work. It represents an increasing trend in the Blake for artists to be using visual means like this. And here we have this uh, somewhat strange depiction of an elderly man who's clearly unwell, uh, very fragile health, and he's swinging this beautiful silk sheet around in the, sp in the space. It's, it's called Butterfly Man, uh, which is a wonderful poetic reference to this very fragile human being having a moment of reverie, of delight, of ecstasy, of enjoying the space he inhabits. And yet as an observer I'm drawn in, I notice his decayed appearance and I read the artist's description of uh, this human being who's near death. This work invites me in to an empathetic space to begin to understand the experience of another human being. This is the invitation, the language of justice. The winner this year of the Blake Prize is a work by Trevor Nichols, a very well-known Indigenous artist whose whole body of work is concerned with reconciliation. It's the issue that goes to the heart of justice in Australia, how we actually live with a culture of diversity and respecting uh, Aboriginal culture and the other migrant cultures that we live with. Uh, Trevor completed this work not long before he passed away late last year. So it's a testament to his lifelong passionate concern with issues of reconciliation within his own life, uh, brought up as a young Christian person and then recovering his own identity as an urban Aboriginal. Uh, this work, Metamorphosis, is perhaps an eloquent testimony to a, a body and a life of work and also a testament and invitation to consider the ramifications of reconciliation within our own culture.